Chapter 6 Renaissance in India In India, the age of Renaissance began in the 19th century. The Renaissance was a broad movement that brought about the transition of India from the medieval age to modernity. The movement manifested itself in many fields such as social, political, religious, economic and cultural. Let us study the movement in this lesson. Indian Renaissance Educated Indians began to realize that the excessive importance given to religious rites, rituals and customs, superstitions, casteism, social hierarchy as also the lack of the spirit of scientific inquiry had arrested the progress of Indian society. They realized that India had lost her freedom mainly due to the backwardness of her society. They began to think about how the social ills and evil tendencies could be removed in order to bring about the nation's progress. They began to express their views about how to transform India into a modern nation. This intellectual awakening in India of that period is called the Indian Renaissance. This intellectual awakening began with the middle class that had received Western education. They assimilated new ideas and values through the knowledge they gained from the West. Reform regarding women the condition of women at the beginning of the 19th century was miserable. They did not get an equal treatment. They were denied education. They had no economic and social rights. They were victims of evil practices such as female infanticide, child marriages, marriages of young girls with aged men, dowry system, sati, tonsure, prohibition of widow marriage and so on. The movement for reforms regarding women addressed these issues. The agitation against the abominable practice of sati launched by Raja Ram Mohan Roy led to the passing of the act banning the practice of sati. Gopal Hari Deshmukh, Lok Hitavadi, severely criticized the evil customs related to women in the Hindu social system. He upheld the equality of men and women saying that God had created men and women alike and therefore their rights too are equal. The first school for girls was started by Mahatma Jyotirao Phule in Pune in 1848. His wife Savitribai Phule taught in the school despite strong opposition from the society. Jagannath Shankar Shet, Ishwar Chandra Vidyasagar, Pandita Ramabai and other social reformers greatly contributed to the cause of women's education. Mahatma Phule started an orphanage in his own residence. He organized a strike of Nabhiks with a view to putting an end to the practice of tonsure. Mahatma Phule's efforts were not limited to only resolving social issues connected with women. He endeavored to change the male chauvinistic attitude that belittled women. Stri Purush Tulana, 1882 written by Tarabai Shinde, was a fruit born out of his endeavors. Tarabai, who belonged to a rural Marathi family in the Buldhana region, upheld the rights of women in fiery words. Ishwar Chandra Vidyasagar, Vishnu Shastri Pandit and Viresh Lingam Pantalu made great efforts to obtain recognition for widow marriages. Gopal Ganesh Agarkar strongly objected to the attitude that confined women to kitchen and child rearing. He was of the opinion that boys and girls both should be given the same education. He strongly asserted that a woman should be able to move about in society as freely as a man. Maharshi Dhondo Keshav Karve founded a widow's home or Anath Balikashram for the education of widowed girls. His efforts resulted in the establishment of the first women's university in the 20th century. Maharshi Vithal Ramji Shinde launched a reform movement for women among the larger sections of society. He organized a conference at Mumbai against the practice of Devadasi. In the south, Periyar Ramaswami Naikar strongly opposed this practice of Devadasi. He condemned the expensive marriage system that reduced women to a secondary position. Dr. Baba Saheb Ambedkar, through his articles, exposed the injustice inflicted on women in the male-dominated society. Many women began to join his movement. 
This movement took women's reforms to the lowest sections of society. The women's reform movement resulted in putting an end to many unjust practices. The idea that women should be treated as equals began to take root. Women began to prove their abilities in many different fields of life. Movement for the Abolition of Caste Discrimination The caste system was prevalent in Indian society. It was based on inequality, exploitation and injustice. The social reformers realized that the barrier of the caste system should be removed in order to bring about the progress of the country. Reformers such as Lok Hitavadi, Mahatma Phule, Gopal Ganesh Agarkar, Swami Dayanand Saraswati, Narayan Guru and Viresh Lingam Pantalu strongly condemned the evils of the caste system. Mahatma Phule opened the schools for the Dalits. Through his writings, he tried to awaken the Dalits. He was of the view that the right to education should not be limited only to upper class males but should also be made available to the downtrodden classes and women. He founded the Satya Shodhak Samaj. Through his movement, he endeavored to inculcate the values of social equality and justice. In Kerala, Narayan Guru organized the reform movement for the removal of social inequality. He gave importance to inter-caste marriages with a view to abolishing caste discrimination. Later, we shall study the Dalit movement separately. Religious Reform Movements Certain institutions established in India during this period gave momentum to social and religious reforms. Raja Ram Mohan Roy founded the Brahmo Samaj in Bengal. The followers of Brahmo Samaj believed that there is only one God. Dadoba Panduranga Tarkhadkar founded the Paramahosa Sabha. An important feature of this society was opposition to the caste system. Atmaram Pandurang Tarkhadkar founded the Prarthana Samaj in Mumbai. Justice M.G. Ranade, Dr. R.G. Bhandarkar and Justice K.T. Telang were the leaders of the Prarthana Samaj. This society based its tenets on the teachings of the Varkari movement. This society advocated prayers and devotional songs in place of rituals for worshipping God. Swami Dayanand Saraswati founded the Arya Samaj in Mumbai. Swami Vivekanand founded the Ramakrishna Mission. He taught that service to humanity is the true religion. All these institutions criticized superstitions, the caste system and other ills prevalent in the society. They asked people to have faith in their own conscience and not have blind faith in scriptures. The Ramakrishna Mission, the Arya Samaj and the Theosophical Society explained the greatness of Indian culture to the world. The Singh Sabha was founded at Amritsar for religious reforms among the Sikhs. It worked for the spread of education and for bringing about modernization in the Sikh society. Later, the Akali movement continued the reformist tradition in the Sikh society. Social reforms in the Muslim society were initiated by Abdul Latif. He founded the Mohammedan Literary Society in Bengal. Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan established the Mohammedan Anglo-Oriental College. Later, this institution came to be converted into the Aligarh Muslim University. He opposed the ignorance, superstitions and evil customs prevalent in the Muslim society. He firmly believed that the Muslim society would not progress without the acquisition of Western education and science. Renaissance in other fields During the Renaissance, along with the reform movements, the progress made in the fields of literature, arts and science was also remarkable. Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore and C. V. Raman were the recipients of the Nobel Prize in Literature and Science respectively. All these advancements went into the shaping of modern India. During this period, many changes took place in the fields of literature and arts. Novel, a new form of literature, emerged. The life of ordinary men and women came to be depicted in literature. Thought-provoking essays were written. Subjects like the beauty of nature, love for the nation and human feelings found place in the literature of the regional languages. Inspiring stories and novels giving the message of freedom were written. 
thoughts about social reforms came to be expressed in literature. Women too began to write in this period. Their writings expressed the female psyche effectively. New journals, newspapers and magazines became vehicles of social reform and political awakening. As in literature, noteworthy progress was also made in the field of arts. Music became more people-oriented. It was used even in the national movement. In Marathi, music-based plays came to be staged. A new style of painting emerged combining the traditional Indian style of painting with the western techniques. The Ajanta style, the Mughal and Pahari miniature styles were revived during this period. In architecture, a new mixed style evolved under the influence of the western style. Many books were written on science. People began to realize the importance of experimentation and scientific outlook for bringing about the progress of the country. This expression of renaissance is important in the history of modern India. Charged with the ideas of liberty, equality and nationalism, the reformers started a nationwide movement in the political field. We shall study it in the following chapter.